Okay, Kins? No, she's Are asking you if you're okay. okay. Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm good. You're, you're the dog's right. okay too. You're right, you're right. Bean, the dog was Bean was in the car, yeah. Did Bean go flying? No, she was in the back seat. She's okay. She's okay. in Jeff's truck. Oh, you're right. you're go. Okay. Get off the highway. Alrighty. Bye. Bye. Welcome back to the weekly vlog. My name is Mike, that's Aaron, and that's Jeff up there unloading meat. Aaron, by the way, if you saw yesterday's vlog at all, decided that not only was she fine with butchering cows, she decided to start taking out deer as well. Uh, the deer how, is still unaccounted. The deer is still unaccounted. How are you? I'm okay. You're okay? Yeah, I'm good. The airbag went off. Airbag got me. Seatbelt. My chest hurt last night, but this morning I'm good. Right. But you're okay? Yeah. The car is dead. To be determined, but most likely, most, most likely total. <laughs> Waiting for insurance to tow it and make a decision. Right. So, car payment? No. No, we're going to be riding bicycles around this Help. place before too long. Hey, that electric bike might just come in handy when we have to go get groceries next week. <laughs> Buy a beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Speaking of which, uh, today Jeff and I actually ran over to Sturgis, South Dakota. It's snowing. It's kind of raining. It's been horrible all day long. Uh, but we had to pick up beef. So we've got an entire trailer load, a 16 foot long trailer full of beef. We also have beef packed in the back of the pickup as well as in the back seat of the pickup, beef and pork. So um, right now we're actually trying to organize all this and figure out where it's gonna go and, and what's gonna happen. Well, we're gonna have to take it over and unload in the garage. And we have to move stuff between the shop and the garage. So um, I'm totally in the way here, but. Yeah, get to work. I know, right? Well, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta set the, the mood. <laughs> I notice no, you're not working. You're, you're watching me set the mood. <laughs> Jeff's the only one that's working around this place. Alrighty, so we've got to get all this put away today. Uh, we have a load of hay coming that uh, here in about uh, three hours that Jeff's gonna unload for us. I think, hopefully, uh, we've got kids to get out of school. Uh, it never stops on the ranch, and we've got up to eight inches of snow on the way. So, it's like three. is it three now? I don't know. Up there TikTok. Well, okay. Well, it, I've heard between two and eight inches of snow. So, what's supposed to get? It could, yeah, see? Yeah, south is going to get more. Uh huh. All right. Well, we'll call William Dunn. We'll find out what's really, <laughs> really going to happen. All righty, guys. We're going to get to work here. Uh, we'll set you up on time lapse and uh, we'll see what we do with all this stuff. This pork is put away now it's time for all this that and beef it's what's for dinner that's what you have to
to do is show you exactly what we've got here in these freezers. Now, obviously we had, like I said, all the hamburger and everything else across the way in the shop. In here, this is our steak freezer, um, which actually has one box of each kind of steak. It's about a third, maybe a third, maybe a quarter of, uh, of all the steaks that we've gotten. So all of them are in there. There's uh, obviously sirloin, ribeye, um, T-bones, cube steak, skirt steak, flank steak, up here and then of course tenderloins down there on the bottom um, on the, in this freezer Aaron managed to jam a whole bunch of pork so we got pork cutlets ground pork ham steaks in the door um, there's also a couple of prime ribs in there next freezer is uh, ground pork next freezer pork chops next one this one's got a little bit of everything in it but it's got everything from roasts to extra to the steaks uh, I think there's some spare ribs, some other stuff in there. Uh, this one, kind of the same thing, a little bit of everything, but it's more pork. So there's bacon, side pork, which is uncured bacon, um, shoulder roast, sausage, all that kind of good stuff. And then this one over here still holds uh, what we had kind of left over, um, some bacon and chickens and that kind of stuff. So definitely plenty of meat to go around. Um, like Aaron said, we're trying to get the whole uh, shipping thing going. I'd like to have it done a little bit sooner than uh, the beginning of November. I'd like to be testing it uh, by within about a week or so from now. So um, I've got some boxes on the way and, and we're gonna get rolling with that. So we still have our hay on the way today. Um, so we're gonna go deal with that. In the meantime, I guess we'll catch you tomorrow. Tomorrow is supposed to be storming, nasty, snow, everything else all over again. So I think we're gonna find something to do inside. We'll figure out what that's gonna be. As we move into more to as we move into tomorrow on the weekly vlog. Thanks, guys. We got all that meat <laughs> crammed into every single corner, every, nook and cranny. Every single freezer. Bean did eat one dog bone, so that helped that make some helped space. That helped a lot. Yeah. yeah. Hi hey guys, Wednesday here on the weekly vlog. Our newest video uh, has just been released here about uh, almost an hour ago. It's uh, 4.53 p.m. and I'm hanging out up here in the studio where I usually am after a video is released. I like to uh, um, come in and, and start looking at comments on a video and I don't I don't watch the comments forever but I do pop in and out here over the next few days um, keeping a track keeping track of, of where the video is going and what kind of questions are coming out uh, because of it because that actually may lead to another video but right now I'm uh, just going through and answering kind of this first hours worth of videos it's amazing to me that some people um, are commenting you know two minutes after the video came out when it's a 20 minute video, but I get it. Um, but those real good comments start rolling out a little bit later on after the video's been out for a few minutes or you know an hour or whatever it may be. So this video, uh, obviously very tough for some people to watch. I talked to a number of people who, who said I, I just didn't watch the video. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Um, but a lot of people did watch the video. A lot of good questions came out of the video so far and uh, a lot of good comments. So what I thought I'd do today is kind of sit down and talk to you about uh, and, and take a look at some of those comments answer some of those here and then also you know just kind of talk to you about our process and, and how um, videos go from the studio here to you guys and then eventually you know we're sitting here answering comments so um, first comment uh, to one of the first comments from Lynn uh, Roberg sometimes I hate being a wishy-washy person I understand why you had to do what you did uh, there's no coming back from that kind of injury the, the truth of the matter is that when I first found that calf, uh, I thought there was hope. I honestly did. I'm thinking in my mind, I'm going, okay, I'm going to talk, I'm going to splint this calf. This is a great video because it's going to have a, 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 maybe not a happy ending today, but you know, a month down the road, that calf could be completely better. And we've done this in the past. We've had calves with broken legs that we've had no trouble with. Um, once we had the problem with the calf um, and that we figured out that it was a compound fracture, Obviously, things changed immensely right there. So um, I knew that things were looking uh, a little bit more shaky as, as we found out that it was a compound fracture. We still put her in the trailer. Uh, we still brought her up to the shop where I could get a hold of the vet and, and try to figure out our best course of action. So yeah, uh, Lynn, yeah, you know, there's really no coming back from that injury. I thought there, there might have been. Um, unfortunately, you know, once you talk to the vet and, and get their advice and and he said, yeah, you can bring it in, but it's not going to do us any good. So, um, 
kind of a kind of a crappy situation all the way around. Um, from JB Weld, who's uh, one of our biggest supporters and obviously always at the live streams on the Beyond the Ranch channel. Um, that's too bad. I'm glad you show the good with the bad, though. I think that um, being able to show the bad and and some of the things that happen, and we've showed a lot of bad stuff, guys. We've had um, videos where we've had to do C-sections and try to save a calf of a, a dying cow, and, and we lose both of them. Um, we've had plenty of bad things happen and, and it's a matter of yeah it's showing the good and the bad if you if you don't have bad you I don't think you appreciate how good the good really is so that's that's where I'm coming from um, let's see from uh, let me scroll through here rough times from private crowbar yeah it can be rough but the bad thing is that there's plenty of cows out there that still need you to be you know ready to go so from Pamela Fox, I couldn't watch, poor thing. You know, we understand that, and that's why, um, as soon as we knew that it was not gonna be a happy ending, uh, I went and talked to Aaron. And this wasn't in the video, obviously, but Aaron was actually in the shop when all this was happening. And I went in and I said, hey, this this isn't good. Like, this, this I'm gonna have to put down this calf. And Aaron said, are you filming this? And if, originally, I was filming it for the weekly vlog. And I said, yeah, but I think I'm gonna make it a regular, regular episode. And, and she said, you've, you've got to put in a trigger warning or something. Like, you've got to tell people, like, this is not going to end well. And that's actually the title that we went with uh, for the video. This, this doesn't end well. So, Aaron helping us out there. But I understand. Yeah, some people just couldn't watch. Um, the other big question, and, then, and Don Chappelle was the first one to uh, chapel. Don Chappell was the first one to bring it up. But um, Davey McCollum, and then, you know, it just kind of rolled on from there, was very much the fact, like, that this calf has, has value. It has meat. Um, that is, are you able to harvest this meat? So um, the general, well, the, the answer that I was giving was no. Like, we're not going to be harvesting the meat from that calf. Uh, the main reason is that when we take a cow or a calf or a steer or whatever in to be butchered, it has to be ambulatory. It has to be able to walk. It can't have any giant cysts, can't have a broken leg, can't have any open wounds. And of course, a compound fracture, the bone sticking out the side of the leg is, is an open wound. So if we took that calf to a, pretty much any butcher shop, they're going to say no. Um, the, the chance for infection, which then can lead into infection in the meat, which could get somebody sick, is way too high. Of course, our meat is all USDA inspected, so that's like a double, a double no. Um, the fact of the matter is, too, that, that the, the calf weighed, what, 300 pounds, maybe. So if we're going to get 100 pounds worth of meat, maybe a little bit more, out of this calf, is it worth taking that chance? And for me, my family, and all of our customers that, that uh, are, are relying on us, the, the, big, the big answer is no, it's not worth taking that chance. So um, that calf was put down in a very humane manner and laid to rest. So that's, that's the end of that. From RTK, this is real life. There are things that people need to see. Thank you for showing this. There's there's a lot people need to see. I believe it, and I agree with you. Um, there are some things people don't need to see, and we take you know that's our personal life. That's that kind of stuff that we can that we can keep to ourselves. But yeah, if it comes to farming and ranching and where your food comes from, um, this is part of it. This is these are decisions that farmers and ranchers make every single day. Um, about their livestock, about uh, about anything that's under their care. So it's um, it's not always having to um, dispatch an animal or, or euthanize an animal, but sometimes it's about um, do I have to sell calves? I can't feed these animals. Do I need to sell them? Where? How will that affect the ranch farther down the line? Um, drought, buying hay, all these decisions. None of them are easy to make. So uh, if I can share it with you guys, I, I, I hope I can. And I really do appreciate the great comments, guys. Um, it, it was a, a rough video to put together uh, to be able to watch. Honestly, like you, there was people that didn't want to watch it. I really didn't want to watch it. I, I had to lit it. And then I had to watch it over and over and over again as I edited it together. 
to, to put it out for you guys. So thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And uh, that's where we're going to leave it for today. We'll catch up with you tomorrow. Um, we still have some more stuff to do during the week. Um, I know I've got an oil change day planned, uh, changing some oil in the Gators and or the Gator and the four-wheelers. Um, we also have to do something with Duke Fader because he's over by himself in a corral, and I'm thinking um, we might move him somewhere. And, uh, yeah, we'll find all kinds of cool stuff to do coming up right here on the weekly blog. Thanks. There you go. Hey guys, welcome back to the daily, weekly, daily vlog thing that we like to do here, uh, here on Our Wyoming Life. Jeff back here with me and today we have a project uh, that we're going to get started on and that is changing oil in all the machinery around the ranch. Now we're going to start with probably what we use the most and that's the, the gator and the two four-wheelers at this point. Uh, eventually we'll move into tractors and all kinds of crap so we've got lots of oil to be changed um, we're trying to kind of get ourselves organized here a little bit so we've got all of our oil changing stuff down here that we're going to need everything from filters all the way to uh, spark plugs and for the gator as well and a few tools that we think we're going to need but we're going to start out because it's been extremely muddy outside um, we're going to actually start out over here and washing some of these vehicles off as we uh, as we get going and to do that we're going to use the bcs uh, with the pressure washer attachment on it. So the BCS tractor is actually one of the most versatile uh, tractors that we have on the ranch. Whereas, you know, a big tractor, you can hook up pretty much anything to it, PTO, that kind of thing. This little guy is almost exactly the same way. It's a two-wheel tractor. Uh, we use it in the gardens. We use it around the ranch for mowing. Uh, it's got different attachments that are all PTO driven. It's one motor we have to maintain works great you can check them out bcsamerica.com is their website right now we have the pressure washer attachment on it and we're going to use that to uh to clean these guys up before we bring them in to change oil and uh and get everything done to them that we need to another rough old day here at the factory Ten hours feel like twenty-four. Oh, but I can't walk away quite like I want to. I have too many bills at my door. Oh, but it's five oh one today. I can fire up a Chevrolet. With all the guys, watch the women all walk by. My stress will disappear, and all that hate. And I can be myself at 501 today. My hands are filled with sweat from my labor. Mixed in with calluses and grime All right. And that boss man stands behind me And just watches It feels like a prison in my mind But if I go on today I can fire up a Chevrolet down the patties, bar and grill we'll Shoot the ball with all the guys Watch the women all walk by No, my stress will disappear And all that haze And I can be myself at 501 today
one today I can fire up my Chevrolet And head on down the patties Bar and grill We'll shoot the ball with all the guys Watch the women all walk by Will my stress will disappear And all that haze I can beat myself back 501 today So there we go, all three of these guys Two four-wheelers and the Gator Oil's changed. Really, that's all I said I was going to do was change the oil. Yeah. You know, so even though we didn't get the air filters and the spark plugs done on that, I mean, on these four-wheelers, I think we're relatively good. Well, there's no more dust for a while, so the air filters aren't that big a deal on the four-wheelers. No, you're right there. You're right there. But it'd be nice to change them out. We'll just have to figure out what exactly the number is. Yeah, don't, uh, don't go by what uh, they tell you for just the model number of the vehicle, because apparently that changes based on age year all that kind of good stuff yeah. so probably different serial numbers you know one probably. serial number difference can make a make a huge difference okay we got some more stuff to do today but uh, we're going to cut you guys loose jeff can you go feed the steers and the horses a bale yes. looks like they're out and then we'll reconvene and and come up with a game plan you got it all right thanks guys Welcome back to the weekly vlog. Jeff here. You remember him, oil changer extraordinaire. Um, I am actually going to duck out today, and Jeff is going to take you for a little trip down to cake the cows or do whatever it is he that he does. And uh, we've had a lot of questions coming through the channel about winter and how Wyoming compares to California, Northern California, uh, and you know, just kind of. I figured we just turn Jeff loose, and and he can, uh, yeah, do whatever Jeff does. So, are you ready for this? Sure. All right. Um, yeah, go kick the cows. Okay. I don't know where they're at. I, they're not far. Okay. So. <laughs> there you go. All Have right. fun. Got to learn how to use a camera now. Well, that's the end you want to be on. We want to go backward the other way. <laughs> Where's the gator? Uh, where is the gator? Oh, it's it's at the incinerator. I was unloading okay. stuff. First, to kick the cows, we got to get the gator. If you watch the webcam, um, you didn't see cows yesterday and now you do. They've started coming back towards the house because they know there's a bit of a storm coming. They're not they're not stupid. That's one thing. Over here's where we keep the cake in that uh, contraption that Mike built. It works really well. Getting in it's kind of a trick. severe. Being from uh, San Francisco, obviously we don't have snow. We could go to the snow, we could play in the snow, but we don't have to shovel snow. So, but I am surviving, I'm alive still. And apparently it gets worse, I don't know. It's been pretty nice this week, been in the 60s this week. So I can live with that. So 
so looks like most of the cows are in the hay field today. And as you can see right there, they know the gator means cake. it all in one place because then a few cows get all the reward and you don't want one or two cows getting all of this cake I believe it's two pounds per animal per day <clears throat> I guess you could say that they can get too much of a good thing friendly and that's it that's pretty much Friday done oops so proof that I am still surviving winter in Wyoming you've seen the cows the gator the cake 
and me all at the same time. So all is well. Fear not. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. It's Saturday here on the weekly vlog, the last day so far this week. Aaron's hit a deer. We've totaled out the Yukon. We changed some oil. Jeff took you down to, to cake the cows. And now we're going to do a little work uh, with our friendly neighborhood bull. His name is Doof Vader. He's been on the ranch for a couple years now, and he's our only bull on the ranch. And we're going to give him a new home today. First, we got to find out, uh, well, where he's at. Back with us is ranch hand Jeff. How's your week going? Well, fairly good. <laughs> the weather's been nice. It's been very nice this week. 60s. Yeah. I'll take that. We do have, what, a storm on the way? Some rain, little, snow? A little bit of rain tonight, I believe. Not horrible. Nothing major. So we didn't bring back a rattle paddle or anything. We'll find out how easy it is to move Doof here. So Doof Vader has been over here by himself in this corral for uh, a couple months now and we're actually going to take him out of this corral we're going to take him over and put him over with the steers two reasons one he's probably getting a little lonely because he's hanging out over here with some steers um, young steers these are actually this year's calves um, but the other reason is that we don't have to feed as much we'll feed with the steers he'll eat there with the steers and the horses so we don't really have to mess around with uh extra feed and extra water and all that kind of good stuff. We're just going to get all this done all at once. So here is Doof Vader. Come on, kiddo. Come on. Move your butt. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> now moving a bull can make you a little nervous because they're not really used to following the orders of anybody. So the biggest thing with moving a bull is that you just don't want to get them angry. Come on. Let's go. Come on, kiddo. There you go. <laughs> we might need a shaker paddle because he doesn't really want to go anywhere. So Doof Vader here got his name the day that he arrived on the ranch. Um, we bought him, the guy that we bought him from, as he was unloading him from the trailer, uh, called him Doofus as he was getting him off the trailer. Just a little two-year-old bull at that point. Uh, we asked the internet if we should name him, and uh, one of the names that came up was Dark Vader, Darth Vader, sorry. And uh, we decided to combine that we had two basic winners. We had Doofus and Darth Vader. So we ended up going with Doof Vader for his name. Which is very fitting, if you ask me. So you can see that not only does he have a brand on his side, he also has a number that's actually freeze branded there as well. <laughs> that number that's freeze branded is 9586. And the first number there tells me what year he was born. So he was actually born in 2019. Come on, kid. Let's go. There you go. Come on, bud. Come on. Come on, Doof. Turn around. Come on. Hey, come on. Let's go. Come on, Doof. Come on. Don't square off against me. Come on. Keep your head up, we're okay. Yeah. Come on. Come on, turn around. We may end up going and get a four-wheeler to do this. Come on, turn around. I don't think he wants to play along. Oh, you're gonna go in there now? Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on, boy. Nope. Ah, oh, you turd.
All right. I guess if, my, if it works, we'll just keep on doing it. Come on, Stinky. Come on. There you go. Come on, let's go. Go to the trailer. Get on the trailer. Come on. There you go, big kid. Good boy. Cool. Nice. Wow. We're all set. Hey, I'm gonna disentangle the four wheeler, and I'll just meet you over there. Okay. The gate's not locked though, so you're gonna have to pull forward and yeah, we'll latch it. Latch it. Yep. Right, so Jeff is taking him across the road, over with the steers and the horses. We're gonna buzz over there really quick for the uh, for the release, and we'll see how he does. steers over here are a little bit over a year old um, there's a good chance that some of these might be his baby so might be having a little bit of a family reunion here hey kiddo how's it going hi how you doing family reunion time yeah. Hi. <laughs> Go see your babies. Baby daddy. Ooh, look at that. So that's mission accomplished. Doof Vader is now over here with the steers and the horses who couldn't give a rats behind about what's going on up here sure checking him out oh yeah and now we only have to feed one bale we have to worry about one water yeah. and we don't have a special circumstance for one single bowl and the nice thing is he can't get any of these guys pregnant that is a nice thing of course it is 2021 so who knows <laughs> uh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> not touching that one all right i'll see you back over there all righty guys that's it we're done for the week uh, we will see you on Wednesday with a brand new video here on All Wyoming Life. And then, of course, Sunday with, a, uh, with another weekly vlog next week. Sign up for our newsletter. Head on over to our website, ourwyomingalife.com, and sign up for the newsletter. You can get updates on what's happening on the ranch every single Monday right straight to your email. So until I see you again, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming Life. Wyoming Life.